Hey y'all, N4H and H here. I just finished working some FT8 and I'm going to show you how I get things into my QRZ log for confirmation. So I let WSJTX handle the logging. I'm going to uh, select this shortcut here I created that takes me to the WSJTX folder. There's a file in here called WSJTX underscore log dot ADI. See that ADI? It's an ADIF file, and uh, that is a file format that is interchangeable across multiple ham radio platforms. You can open it up and look at it with Notepad. See? Now, you don't have to do this step. I'll just go ahead and tell you that I have been keeping everything I've ever logged in FT8, except for the first few, in that file, so I don't delete that file. It'll, it'll, it'll recreate it, by the way. But I've been letting it just build and grow. So this extra step I'm going to do, you don't have to do if you just delete the file after every session. Somebody had suggested to me, hey, you might want to just let the file collect everything you've ever done. And I don't know. Eventually, I might just start clearing it out or deleting it. All right, but well, what I'm going to do, so my little extra step here is I'm going to copy that file. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I mean, you could go where you want, but I go to Downloads and Paste. And now this version, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to start up here in the top left and swipe down, because these are all my all my contacts, dating back to all the time I spent writing those uh, FT8 guides for the FTDX10 and the FT710, and then I wrote one. Uh, well, I did a I did a fit guide video for the FTDX101. But all that time I spent creating that, those are all those contacts. And all right, now what I'm doing is scrolling down to today's date. So here we are. Uh, let's see, right. Twenty twenty four six eleven. Da, 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 da. Wow, did I make that many today? I guess I did. All right, so you, you see right. The, whoops, I just wiped that one out. Right there's today's session. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything up to that point. Like I said, if you just delete this file after every session, you want to do this. I don't know why I keep convincing myself to hold on to it. Just Somebody said, hey, it's a good idea to, you know, keep that file if you want to go back and look at everything you ever worked. It's in my log. I really should just delete the file. All right, but anyway, so here's how I would do it if, if you want to play along and do it that way. Now, I still got a little left over from this one. So I'm going to get rid of it. Again, this is just notepad. All right, so these are the contacts from today. Looks like I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, I'm going to save that file. Close it down. And then I'm going to go over here to my other screen. Let me move the camera. Yes, ham clock is there right now, but I'm going to open up my browser, go to QRZ, go to my logbook, and hit Settings, Import. Choose file, and it automatically goes back where I last pulled a file from, which is convenient. It goes to downloads, and there's the WSJTX. Let me pan up there and zoom. So there's the WSJTX underscore log.adi file. Date, time. Okay, I'm going to hit open. Select it and open. And now it's ready to be processed. I'm going to say, I'm going to click this. Let me pan down. Zoomed in so much here. See, I'm going to click import ADI file. It's uploading. Zoom back out. And it's finished. Click continue and then click list. And now all those FT8 contacts are in my log. And as they confirm, I'll get little gold stars here. So there they are. That's how they get into QRZ and I can confirm them. Now I could just also go over to my N3FJP logging program, this local on the computer. If I want to get them in there, I can import them also 
as uh, from that ADI file or I could go in here and I say, well, I want to select, it's easier actually to select them all and then unselect the ones that aren't new. <laughs> okay. Over here, see the little check boxes. All right. So there's the first FT8 contact right there. So I've got those checks. I'm going to click actions, export the selected records, continue and close. I mean, just, just if you want to, I'm just showing you all kinds of things. Again, I could import them directly in F, N3FJP. So what's happening now is it's sending an email. So back over to this monitor, and yep, there's my notification that the email's here. I'm going to open N3FJP. Love this logging program. It's currently showing my last QSO up there, which was on 7150 with AD4PF, Billy. I call it the Billy Net. A lot of people check in with Billy. Okay, so those FT8 contacts I want to import into here. And again, I could get them from the little ADIF file that I use to upload them to QRZ, or I can pull them from QRZ. I'll show you how to pull them from QRZ. If I wanted to pull them, by the way, from the file, then you know you go over here to File, Import, ADIF, and then I could navigate to that downloads folder because I want to get the one that's only got the contacts from today. And there it is. And I'd hit open and it would import them. Here's how it works with QRZ. I'm going to open up my, my mail. And there's going to be a QRZ. There it is. And then I'll click this. It says click here to download. And now it's over on my other monitor. I'll move there for a second. It says, do you want to, what do you want to do with this? I say, I'm going to uh, save as, and it's going to go into my downloads folder. All right. And now I will close that down and go to file import. I, I'm just showing you all kinds of different options. Okay. This is not complicated. I just want you to see various options. There's the file I just got from QRZ. Again, they, they sent me those 11 records. Select that, click open, and boom, there they are in N3FJP. What, Doug, why do you do that? Why do you have a log in two places? Well, I, you wouldn't believe how many times I've messed something up or probably been at least two, maybe three, where one log, I use one log to, uh, to fix the other and vice versa, okay? But putting them on QRZ also gets them confirmed. So now it's in two places. I, I, now, when I'm doing QSOs for CW or sideband, I'm usually logging directly here where you see. And this automatically sends it to QRZ. I don't do anything else. Just log here and I'm done. But when I'm doing FT8, I let the, uh, FT, the WSJTX log.ADI file collect the contacts. And then I do what you just saw at the beginning of the video. I upload them to QRZ. And I could also upload them into here. Or I can let QRZ send them back and let me upload them from there like you just saw. Lots of options. Okay? I hope I didn't confuse anybody. I just wanted you to see that, you know, there's more than one way to do this. All right? Hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Do me a favor. Hang around for a half a minute or so. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team members who make these videos possible. I call them long haulers because they've supported the channel, some of them for three and a half years. You watch this video today because of them. Without them, this video and hundreds of others would not exist because I'm not a commercialized channel. YouTube runs their ads. I have no control over that. And that does not produce much revenue. I, would, I, I almost quit twice because it just wasn't cutting it. And I found out about the Patreon option for people to be able to make donations to uh, to help me keep doing this. And that is sustaining the channel. Without them, you wouldn't have seen this video. So please watch as I acknowledge five of those long haulers who made this video and hundreds of others possible. Thanks again. And 73 from N4HNH.